My name is Daniel Weaver and I'm Interflow's Operations Manager. I've got overall responsibility for successful, safe, cost-effective delivery of the job. Terry's Creek is located in the Ride Epping area. All these assets run right beside a creek. I think it, from a client's perspective it was important that these assets are rehabilitated now. They were not at the end of their service life, but they were headed that way. And by completing the project now, that saves significant time, cost, risk, those sort of things that would otherwise be experienced. At times, we're up to almost a kilometre remote from, from vehicle access. And what that meant is that we needed to challenge ourselves to innovate and really do something that, that we and others have not done before. So based on the access challenges, we had to do a number of things. Um, first and foremost, we had to clear access tracks. Um, we also had to do that uh, with appropriate consideration of, of the environment. And we typically tried to keep the access tracks to a width of about 1.5 metres. Being in national park as well as environmentally sensitive areas, we had to work around a number of constraints. Over the 3.2 kilometres of asset that we were rehabilitating, um, a lot of different uh, ground conditions. We had to put in place a number of access bridges that we'd built. There was probably three or four access points along the entire route where we could bring gear in and we had to work from those three or four points to access the rest of the project. Hello, I'm, I'm Nick Roth. I'm a construction manager with Interflow. So as for access, we, we had to make the majority of the tracks through, through this bush. So what we used was a, a skid steer, basically a Kanga skid steer, chainsaws and, and basically an excavator, cut our way through and made tracks, put our environmental controls in place and basically tried to maintain the tracks. One of the issues we've had to contend here with is wet weather. When it rains, we get about 200 mil of water over this track and it becomes really difficult to move. And then the other issue we've got, we've got the creek right next to us, which actually engulfs a lot of the manholes when it does rain. So we've got to be aware of what the weather forecast is and have a, a plan to evacuate the site and get all the equipment to high ground in wet weather conditions. Okay, the first process is to clean the pipe. The difficulties we face here is the remoteness. So basically we're 700 metres from the road where we can get our truck and we need to get this cleaning machine over the hole and then supply the pressure from the truck which is 700 metres away to the machine. So what we've got, we've got a Super 3000 which, which is a recycler. It sucks the water out of the sewer, cleans it and puts it back through the high pressure pump and into the sewer. So it's recycling the sewer water so we don't have to use clean potable water to clean the line. So it's a big advantage when, when there's water restrictions and it's not wasting a resource. The manholes on the project did present a series of challenges. Uh, some of them were raised above ground because the site does flood. Some of them were very shallow, so in terms of depth they probably range from a metre deep and this is a 750mm sewer, so that means 250mm on the top. Um, at most they would have been two and a half metres deep. And in terms of accessing people and equipment we were working with very confined spaces. If we approached the job in a standard way, we would have typically wound from downstream to upstream and on this project that would have meant about 60 manhole visits. By being smarter in terms of planning as well as equipment, you know, we were able to bring that number somewhere close to half by either winding through manholes and achieving double shots or by working from a manhole in both directions, upstream and downstream. It was also an equipment element and we really worked hard to develop, innovate, modify our equipment so that it was more compact and suited to this specific project. Interflow has a number of different lining technologies available and when we looked at this project we really looked at what was the most appropriate solution. What we, what we tended with and what we used on the project was our expander pipe process which is a PVC spiral wound product. And the main reason we went that direction was due to our ability to use it in the remote location, but also our ability to work within the existing flow conditions on these assets. Um, we considered other technologies, but those other technologies would have needed us to put in place a fairly significant bypass, 
and that would have added another element of complexity as well as significant cost to the project. The site we're working on is one of high flows as well as steep grades and when we're working in the upstream to downstream direction during expansion of the expander pipe there are some challenges to be managed. The way we manage that is by a plug and release process where we're effectively stopping flow and releasing flow. What we have here is the profile so we need to get this product to our machine and that's what we use to wind the pipe. Usually this, this would be on the back of one of our lining trucks and would pull up over the manhole, but in these circumstances we don't have, have that luxury. So what we've done, we've built a trailer to, to transport the material and we're basically feeding it through the bush manually. Typical line that we're doing could be 2,000 metres of, of material has to be transported from this point to the, to the machine which is 700 metres away. On completion of the project, what we hand to Sydney Water is initial CCTV footage of the pipe. That is CCTV footage we've taken before lining. We also give them post lining footage, which is CCTV footage completed after the lining has been installed. There were no major problems encountered along the way. I think we were well planned for the project and everything that we encountered we knew was coming and we had a plan for. What I would say though is that the access constraints and the remoteness of this job was something that needs to be experienced to be believed. The project has performed very well, um, on time, on cost, on budget, uh, no safety incidents, no environmental incidents. Um, there have been a number of lessons learned along the way and we've, we've implemented them as we've gone to improve the position. My name's James Hazeman. Graham Lindebaum. Clifford uh, Hazeman. It's Anthony Thomas. It's a very important job. I mean, I've got people's lives in my hand, so I've got to be on top of it 24-7. Well, I've worked in places and uh, sites that I probably never would have heard of or seen of, thought of visiting before. And yeah, it's great. I'm still here. Still get up early every morning for it. So. From the start, it's always, it's always been something new. I, I love working in this environment. 